so if you were planning this kind of encounter in the National Security Council or the State Department, I think there are a few areas that you would you would really want them to focus on. Um, you would want them to talk about Syria in a serious way. You would want them to talk about Ukraine in a serious way. And you'd want them to talk about arms control and, and, and nuclear weapons in, in a serious way. And then you'd also want the U.S. president to challenge uh, the, the Russian president on Russian interference in, in American democracy and have a kind of serious, serious rejoinder to that. If you went and if Trump went into the NATO summit, that went really well. He came out of it with um, with the optics of, of serious alignment between the U.S. and its European partners. That would give him leverage in, in a negotiation with Putin. The problem is if um, if the pattern in the last few weeks with the G7 and then the encounter with the, with the North Koreans holds, he, he's just as likely to undercut solidarity with allies and insult NATO, talk about um, uh, tariffs targeted at our European partners more than, uh, more than the Chinese or Russians. And if, if that happens, if there's a sense of disarray in the transatlantic relationship going into the Putin-Trump encounter, that undermines US leverage and helps Putin. Um, sitting face to face with the U.S. president and between the two of them working out arrangements in all of these different conflicts in the world. It puts Putin at a very high level. Um, it allows him to play his hand very, very skillfully. And it creates this image of the United States and Russia together addressing the biggest problems on the, on the global stage and with, with the two of them as equals. And that is a huge help to Putin at a time when you know, Russian power over the long term is declining. And he is trying very, very hard to make sure that it retains a kind of central role in each of these conflicts. And he's done that very well. So even as Trump has talked about uh, his relationship with Russia, the US Congress and other parts of the government have started um, uh, implementing new rounds of sanctions. And Putin would like some relief from that. So if he can use uh, this opportunity to give Trump a political victory and make Trump feel like they've had a successful summit in exchange for some uh, uh, relaxing of sanctions on people around Putin who are, who are important to his power base, that would be a, a real victory for Moscow. If you got a serious statement from Putin and a real commitment on electoral interference and really move that forward, if you got a serious process going on arms control, on, on, on nuclear weapons, and if you got some kind of progress on the situation in the Ukraine, um, I think that that would be perceived as a win. I think all of those are, are probably long shots, but if you could move some subset of those um, of those of those challenges and, and, and really kind of make policy progress, not just kind of gauzy high-level announcements, but really make progress on those, I think that that would be positive.